Uh, welcome to our service. I'm uh, just going to begin with some, some notices. Uh, for those uh, watching on YouTube, uh, if you haven't already, if you can subscribe and like, uh, and certainly if you've already subscribed, if you can like uh, the video that you're, you're watching right now. Um, for uh, those uh, who have food or, or want to donate food, then you can see that they're low on potatoes and soap at the minute, either liquid soap or bar soap. But there's other things that you can bring as well and bring those donations uh, to the rectory and then we'll bring them into Enniskillen to the food bank. Our midweek service uh, this week uh, on Wednesday is at 8 o'clock. Uh, we'll be looking at another parable of Jesus. We'll be looking at the parable of the prodigal son. Uh, if you've missed uh, the, our other one, then you can always go it's both on YouTube and on Facebook and you can look at that. You can have a a watch party even at any time uh, if you find if you listen to it and you think that's something I want to share then share it with other people then we'll have a discussion at quarter past nine on the passage and then next Sunday uh, we'll be looking at Matthew 10 verses 24 to 39 you're worth more than many sparrows that's at 11 o'clock on YouTube and uh, for those uh, who have children and uh, there are resources there you'll see that and there are several passages that are set for today and the passage that they're looking at will, will be about Abraham. Uh, but there's other there's resources there that you can use uh, on Sunday and throughout the week with your children. And so we have our invitation to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will, will rejoice, rejoice and, and be glad, glad in it. Lord, direct our thoughts. Help us to pray and lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Come, Come on, let's worship. worship. And we begin our service by singing Beautiful Saviour.
of God were reminded that the Bible says be holy because I am holy and so we come with that in mind and we confess our sins to God our Father let us pray and together we say Heavenly Father Heavenly Father, Father we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed through negligence through weakness their own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh -huh. Amen. And the collect for the first Sunday after Trinity. God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you. Grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you, both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now Clive is going to read our reading. A reading from Matthew 9, beginning at verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep before the shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the zealot. And Judas Iscariot, who betrayed them. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before the sermon we sing shine. Uh, so there's actions so you can get up and you can do the actions uh, with us uh, god forgive my sins and here i am holy and available shine from inside out that the world will see 
Father, I want to pray that you would take my lips and use them, that you'd speak through them for your name's sake and for your glory. Amen. Well, in this passage, the passage begins with Jesus and, and, and teaching about what Jesus had been doing. Up to that point, we see Jesus doing miracles, healing people and so on. But it's almost like a, a little introductory to before Jesus sends out the twelve. Matthew tells us that Jesus has been doing certain things from town to town, from village to village. He's been teaching in their synagogues. He's been proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. And the first thing is that we see what his motivation is. And we're just going to have two points in this, this passage. And the first thing is same motivation. So what is Jesus's motivation? We see in verse 36, we read this. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. It's interesting when you look at, a, at Ezekiel, and Ezekiel 34, a God has basically, he, he is telling the, the leaders, religious leaders, that they haven't been doing the job that he had given them to do. They were terrible as shepherds. They weren't going after the, the lost, and they weren't caring for the, the people that God had given into their hands. And so God basically said that he was going to shepherd his people. And we see the care of God when we see Jesus. When we see Jesus as he saw the people, he saw that they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And filled with compassion. That word compassion, it basically means that he was moved to his guts. It's, a, it's so deep down, this, this feeling that he, he wants to do something to help them. And so what does he then go on to say? He says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Knowing that these people are needing help, he recognizes that there's a harvest there. And he says that the harvest is actually plentiful. And this is the interesting thing is that the, the need always seems to be greater than those who are willing to work. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And so Jesus then asks, says to the disciples, ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send workers into his harvest field. It's obvious that Jesus is talking about himself. He is the Lord of the harvest. And we're to pray to him that he would send out more workers into his harvest field. What, what do we see that we, we see that um, as as Jesus then goes on to talk to his disciples, he then gives them another motivation. If that wasn't enough, if it wasn't enough to see the needs of the people and to see that, uh, do you know, sometimes I think it's because for, for many people within the church, they have grown up in the church and perhaps they don't know a time when they were without God because it's been a gradual process of, of maybe coming to God, that they don't know what it's like to be without God. And, and the, Jesus is saying, look, this is what it's like. People are helpless without God. Without God to shepherd them, without God to lead them, uh, as we see the psalmist in Psalm 23, David, talking about it. What does he say at the beginning? The Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. He is all that he needs because God's his shepherd, because he's in that relationship where God is caring for him. And for, so for those who don't know that, who haven't brought their lives into the fold to be under the care of the shepherd, they are in need. They are harassed and helpless. And so we need, if that's not enough for us to see how people are when they don't have God and to see that therefore we need to do something that we would have that gut-wrenching thing that would cause us to pray and to seek that God would send out more workers into his harvest field and as we pray that 
that we would actually be willing to, as we see in Isaiah 6, when, when Isaiah had, was told that, that his lips were, were cleansed, and then God says, uh, who, will, who will we send and who will go for us? And what does Elijah say? Or Isaiah say? He says, here am I, send me. He responded very quickly as God had dealt with something in his life. He then responds by offering himself up to God, that God would use him. And so in one sense, that's what uh, we see later on, Jesus beginning to say to the disciples, as he says, freely you have received, freely give. Now, what is he talking about? Is he talking about grace? I, I don't think so. I think it's more that that is talking about the Holy Spirit and, and the fact that they have been given of the Spirit, helping them to do the works that God is sending them out to do. He's giving them, he says that he's giving them power. He's given them authority. He's given them authority to do the, the, the things that he had been doing. And so they are getting uh, something that they haven't worked for. And even the harvest, we see it's God who's actually doing things. It's God who, who works in people's hearts, but he needs those who are going to go uh, and speak the message, proclaim the good news. And so uh, really what we see, we see in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7, this is what Paul says, now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. You see, we're given the Holy Spirit, if, if you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit within you. And it's not just that you've got the Holy Spirit within you, bringing for, uh, forgiveness through, through what Jesus did on the cross, uh, bringing joy and peace and, and the fruit of the Spirit. But we have gifts of the Holy Spirit. And those gifts are given not for us, but for the common good. And we see many of the gifts are given in such a way that we will encourage our, our, our fellow Christians, but there are also gifts that are given that are there to reach other people, there to bring in people into the fold, that they would become those who believe in Jesus Christ themselves. And so we go on to the second one, same method. It's interesting when you see verse 35, it, when it's talking about proclaim, Jesus is proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. Then what, what does he go on to say to them in the next chapter in verse 7 and 8? As you go, proclaim this message. So just as Jesus proclaimed a message, they have to proclaim a message. It's about speaking. So what are, they, what, what are they to say? The kingdom of heaven has come near you. How has it come near? Well, they're going before Jesus. They're preparing the way for Jesus to come. And Jesus is the kingdom. He's the king of kings. He's the king of the kingdom. And so therefore, everywhere where Jesus is, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven has come near. And we as Christians, now that Jesus is with us and in us by his spirit, Everywhere where we go, the kingdom of heaven is near. We bring the kingdom of heaven near to people. That's the amazing thing. And that's the privilege of being Christians. That Christ in us is the hope of glory. He is hope for those who are in despair. For those who are helpless, he is the one who can help. And he can help often through his people. And what does he say? Heal the sick. Raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Just as Jesus was doing those things, now he's sending the disciples out to do those things. They had been traveling with him. They had seen what Jesus had done. And, and there were, Jesus was teaching them along the way, having times with them. Now it was there responsibility now to go and to prepare the way for Jesus coming by doing the works that Jesus was doing too. Later on, what do we see before Jesus goes to the cross? He then talks about 
the, the Holy Spirit coming upon them at Pentecost and talking about that, that now that the Spirit would be upon them, that they would do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. Because they were, now it wasn't just an anointing of the Spirit, they were going to have the Spirit dwelling in them. They were going to have the fullness of the Spirit. Now, Jesus is saying, you will do the same things that I have been doing. You will do even greater things than these. Greater in number, I believe, not greater in power. Because Jesus was given the Spirit without limit. There's something there that, that because Jesus was perfect, therefore he was in, in complete union with the Father. He was able to communicate uh, and, and what, is we, what do we see him doing things? Whatever the Father gave him to, to do, he did it. He pleased the, the Father in everything that he did and said, as we see in John chapter 5. He only said the words that the Father gave him to say. He only did what he saw the Father doing. And so he was given the Spirit without limit. But for us, we can also have the Holy Spirit within us. We can be filled by the Spirit and we can be used by the Spirit to bring healing into people's lives, to heal the sick. We should be expectant of these things happening, that in these days we should be expecting that, as we see in Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verse 8, that it says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And so if Jesus is the God who heals, then we should expect that God will heal today. But now he wants to heal uh, through, through us, through us. He wants us to be his hands, that wherever we are, that we can then bring healing into people's lives. And in these days where we're, we're being socially isolated, you can pray for the phone. You can, you can pray for people. You can ask if there's someone that you're chatting to over the phone and and they say that they're on well. Uh, if it's appropriate, you can say, well, why don't you put your hand where it hurts? And then just over the phone, speak healing and speak to that pain to be gone in the name of Jesus. And just be, uh, step out in faith, believe that if Jesus sent out the 12 and then he sent out the 72, and he says at the, at the end of Matthew's gospel, that the disciples were uh, to teach people to obey everything that he had commanded. If he commanded them to go and to heal the sick, to drive out demons, to raise the dead, then those same things they were to teach others to do. And that's what we see in Acts. We see them continuing on doing the same thing that Jesus did. The method was the same. Now, we see that when it comes to Jesus' healing, that he didn't do things in the same way. And so we need to be very clear that when it comes to healing, that if someone is blind, we, um, we would be perhaps silly to spit in their face, as we see Jesus doing. And we don't know why he did it that particular way, but we see that that was in that one situation in Mark chapter 8, a blind man, he spits in his face and he's healed. Mark chapter 10, another blind person, this time Jesus simply speaks and he's healed. Another time he makes money, puts it on the guy's eyes and we see that, uh, uh, that he has to pray twice. He has to speak healing twice over, over the guy. And what do we see? Uh, Mark 8, 25, we, we, we see that uh, once more Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes and then his eyes were open, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. And so we learn lessons from Jesus that, yes, the method is the same in terms of there needs to be demonstrations of the kingdom, that it's not just about proclaiming that the kingdom is near, we demonstrate that the kingdom is near. We demonstrate that the kingdom is within us because the king is within us. And so that's why Paul was able to say that he didn't come to people with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. You see, in these days, we need to be those who recognize what the church should be like. 
And the church should be a church that proclaims the good news in word and deed. And that's, as we sang, acts of power and authority, or works of power and authority. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for a people, a special people. We're special because of who's in us. And he's looking for a special people who would step out in faith and believe that God can use them. I've been involved in healing ministry now for, since the early 1990s. And, and you, if someone had said to me that, that I would see the things that I, I have seen over, over the time, I, I perhaps wouldn't have believed at the beginning. You, but I stepped out in faith and saw little things happening. But I think that as time has gone on, we're, we're seeing in these days more and more things happening. As we step out in faith. And I believe that God is looking for more people who will step out in faith, who will use this as an opportunity just as Jesus did. Sometimes Jesus spoke about the kingdom to people and then healed. So, so as they were uh, coming to him, he, he first of all would speak and then heal. But other times we see him healing people first. And then using that as an opportunity, as they saw his power, then he then spoke and taught. And so we need to be open uh, to those things. But we also see that a lot of what Jesus did happened as he was interrupted. And I think that's a key thing, that in these days we need to be willing to be interrupted. That so often the, the, the thing can be that we have our schedule and it's like we're asking God to fit into our schedule rather than we need to fit into his schedule. And we need to be open to changing things, to change what it is that we decided to do on a particular day that as, as an opportunity comes, we need to recognize the Spirit's prompting and then to go with it. Just as we see Philip, Philip, uh, he was prompted by the Spirit to go over to speak to, to go near the, to beside the chariot where, where the Ethiopian eunuch was and to listen. And then he, what is he, he hears what he's reading. He asks him, do you understand what you're reading? And then through that, he leads him to faith. We see time and time again in Jesus's ministry and we see it within the, within the, disciples and acts that things happened as people were interrupted and so we need to be willing to be those who are interrupted we need to be willing also to recognize now in Matthew's gospel it's not so clear but if you look at the same passage in Luke's gospel they went out in twos Jesus sent them two by two so the 12 disciples they didn't go out on their own they went out in twos and we see that again in the 72, when, in Luke chapter 10, when Jesus sends out the 72, he sends them out two by two. And there's an importance in that. And I think often as a church, we have failed to recognize this, that there's a need for us to, to be involved in team ministry. We need to recognize that uh, also G there's power when two people pray. What does Jesus say of two People agree on something, it will be done. But often we're expecting one person to do certain things and do it on their own. But the Bible teaches and Jesus' method and model is one of team ministry. Little teams going out and doing things. And even though we're isolated at the minute, we can still do that. And so there are lots of videos and stuff that we have online right now. And you can have a watch party with someone. You can phone someone up and say, do you want to have a watch party together? I, I, I'm afraid I don't quite know what to do here. Can, can we do it together? And you can support and encourage each other. You can be praying that God will help you to, um, to know who you should ask to join that watch party. And you send a specific invite to different people. But you're praying for each other. You're praying that God will help you to have the right attitude to things. And, and then you can discuss afterwards together how things went and see how you can improve on things. But when it comes to healing ministry, 
there's, there's real power when two people are praying for someone. And so you can do that. You can do that together by, by praying for people even over the phone. You can have a WhatsApp group where it's three, three people are together. And, and so it doesn't have to be that you have to be physically there. You can be together praying for someone and you can do that even online. So those two things, we have the same motivation that we should see the need that there is out there in the community, that people are harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. If they don't have God, we need to recognize that God says they are in deep need. And we trust that God's way of, of understanding the situation is correct. And then we should have asked the Lord to fill us with his compassion. If we don't have that gut-wrenching, deep down motivation within us to do something about it, ask the Spirit to give you it, to fill you with his compassion. And then remind yourself that you've been given a free gift. The Holy Spirit, the gift of the Spirit has been given to you. He's given you perhaps more than one gift of the Spirit. And he's given that to you free for the common good. Use those gifts. Use them together with others. The same method that we should expect that God will use us to do works of power. But we also should expect that God will use our lips to speak and proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is near. Let's pray. Father, we do pray that you'd help us in these days. Lord, would you help us to be those who make the most of every opportunity, who see the opportunities that you give us. Lord, forgive us for those times when we do lack compassion, when, Lord, we forget maybe what life was like before you came into our lives. Lord, would you remind us, uh, remind us of the things that you have done in our lives, the chains that you have brought, and therefore the chains that you can bring in others. Lord, help us. Help us to know, uh, Lord, uh, perhaps one other person that we can begin to do ministry with. That we'd pray together, that we'd pray together online and, and then see things that we can do together to reach the loss for you. And we pray that you would have all the glory and all the honour. We ask this in your name. Amen. So now we sing Facing a Task Unfinished.
trust in God the Father. I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. To believe and trust in God the Son. I believe and trust in His Son Jesus Christ who redeemed mankind. To believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit. I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now Joanne's going to lead us in prayer. Almighty God, thank you for your amazing love for us, which you demonstrated through sending your Son to die on the cross for our sins, so that we might be saved. Lord, thank you for your promise that to those who receive you, to those who believe in your name, you give the right to be children of God. Loving Father, we thank you for your worldwide family, the Church, the Body of Christ. We thank you for those whom you send with the Gospel message to different parts of the world. Today we give you thanks for the Church in Tajikistan in Central Asia. We pray, O Lord Jesus, for Christians in Tajikistan facing increasingly restrictive laws. We ask that the authorities will relent from their harassment of your followers and we pray especially for Christian children who have been banned by law for the last nine years from attending any public religious activities or even being on church premises. We rejoice that no earthly law can stop your Holy Spirit from moving where he pleases and ask that he will help these growing youngsters to grow in their faith too. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. We pray that Christians will prayerfully seek your guidance on where you want them to serve you, that they would say, Lord, send me. There are many ethnic groups of people in the world who have still not heard the gospel. We thank you for missionary sending agencies such as CMS Ireland, who support those in mission overseas. We thank you for the internet and the many means we have to communicate the gospel far and wide, but Christians still need to go and be your witnesses in their Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We pray for more workers to go to the harvest field. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, look with mercy on us during this time of the coronavirus pandemic. We thank you that good has come out of it, that many have seen the value of spending more time with you, having quality time with family and staying connected with family and friends. Many have been helping their neighbours and it has brought many communities closer together. But we pray, Lord, for wisdom for our leaders in how to contain this virus, how to learn to live with it until a vaccine can be found. We pray for your comfort for those who have lost loved ones to the coronavirus and your healing on those who have the virus and its symptoms right now. We pray for the recovery of the economy. Many people face hardship at the moment due to lack of finances, especially those in developing countries. This pandemic has shown us how quickly things can change and how temporary things really are. But you, Lord, never change. You are the same God yesterday, today and forever, our rock on whom we can depend. You can bring healing and recovery to our world. We pray for your mercy. Guide governments in the way forward and help the scientists develop a vaccine against this virus. Help the healthcare systems in dealing with the backlog of patients desperately needing treatment for other ailments. God, the problems seem unsurmountable, but for you, all things are possible. Thank you that you are with us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those that have lost loved ones during the lockdown. Strengthen and comfort them and help them to grieve. Lord, we thank you that you are the Lord who heals and the God of all hope and comfort. This morning in the silence, we bring before your throne of grace 
those you have brought to our hearts and minds. And we especially pray for healing for Helen and Mrs Pratt at this time. Lord, stretch out your hand to comfort those who mourn. Bring healing to those who are sick in body and mind and bring hope to those in despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we join together in a general comment. Heavenly Father, Father, in darkness and in light, in trouble or in joy, help us to trust your love, to serve your purpose and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is Glory to God, the source of all our mission.
our closing prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, you emptied yourself, taking the form of a servant. Through, Through your love, make, make us servants of one mm -hmm. another. Lord Jesus Christ, for our sake you became poor. May our lives and gifts enrich the life of your world. world. Let us say together, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And we say the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the, the love, love of God, God and the fellowship, fellowship of the Holy, Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.